Okay, friends, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, today, though, we're going to start moving away from the French Revolution. Uh, technically, you could kind of say this event took place during the French Revolution, but we're going to start moving more into the Napoleonic era now. And that is with the 18th of Brumaire. Now, before I get into that, thank you all so much for the continuous support. We are so close to that 500. Once that we get that 500, this becomes a full-time job for me. So thank you so much all for your support. I greatly appreciate it. If you're returning to the channel, please like, share, and comment. Discuss anything you like. I, you know, as our returning uh, friends know, I am very open to talking and having discussions. Uh, just to keep it appropriate. If you're new to the channel, I please ask uh, for you to subscribe. I would greatly appreciate growing this channel and getting ourselves up there with the other big guys. Now, like I said, we've been discussing the French Revolution a lot. So today I'm going to start the transition from the French Revolution to the Napoleonic era. And that does not happen without the 18th of Brumaire. Coup d'etat. Following the Thermidorian reaction and removal of the ext extremist wing of the Jacobins, the Montagnards, the Committee of Public Safety had been neutered, so to speak. For 10 months, the Committee of Public Safety had been serving as the executive branch of the French government. But in the wake of the fall of Robespierre, a new government was made. A government formed of two legislative houses, the Upper House, the Council of Ancients, then the Lower House, the Council of 500. But the new executive office became known as the Directory. Now, what makes this interesting is it was a five deputies elected to the Directory and they ran the government. This form of government was formed during the 13th of Vendermeer. Paul Barras, the man who led the troops during the fall of Robespierre, had actually subtly formed the Directory when he was defending the meeting of the two other houses. However, Barras would not be the only name associated with the 13th of Vendermeer. A young artillery general had been given command by Barras to put down the Royalist uprising on the night of the meetings. That man's name was... Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon would then be, as a reward, be granted command of the French Army of Italy. This would lead to him ending the War of the First Coalition with the Treaty of Campo Formio in 1797. Napoleon would then lead an expedition to Egypt and Syria. Then, this was a strategy from the Directory to get Napoleon away from the strings of power. But Napoleon himself wanted to move into Egypt as well. So on July 1st, 1798, the French army set off for the Middle East. However, in Europe, the War of the Second Coalition had been set off, and unfortunately, the Directory was not good at leading that war. Barras himself was not exactly a military genius, but following defeat across Europe, the Directory was becoming very unpopular. However, in Egypt, things had not gone in favor of France either when Napoleon's fleet was destroyed at the Battle of the Nile in 1798. This is when Horatio Nelson slammed into the French fleet and destroyed it. Napoleon would then withdraw, leaving his army behind in Egypt. But something else occurred. Napoleon was able to take what was so clearly a defeat and make it a victory. All political factions viewed Napoleon as a hero and sang his praises. Also, Napoleon brought back numerous treasures from Cairo. But members of the Directory were getting tired of the conflicts. This brings us to our second and third major characters in this video. First, an ambitious diplomat and politician. Charles Maurice de Talleyrand Perigo, Talleyrand had actually been a cardinal, choosing a life in the church due to a cleft foot. However, an astute politician, he was able to play a role in the French Revolution derobing himself following the fallout with the Catholic Church. He then became the ambassador minister of France. Those in the United States would remember Talleyrand from the infamous XYZ affair, where he demanded the U.S. diplomats pay him privately in order to negotiate. But as I said, Talleyrand was an astute politician. He knew he didn't have charisma, but he knew that General Bonaparte did. And that's when where we approach our third player. Emmanuel Joseph Saez, he was a Jacobin member of the Directory. He had already with Talleyrand staged a coup to complete control of the Directory in late 1797 that placed Paul Barras in power. But the two men were realizing the weakness of the five-men Directory 
was bringing ruin on France. Another advantage our three conspirators, Bonaparte, Saez, and Talleyrand had, is the Council of 500, the lower house, similar to the House of Commons in England or the House of Representatives of the United States, their president was Napoleon's brother, Lucien Bonaparte. Lucien had actually been a Robespierreist, and though through politicking not only survived the Thermidorian reaction, but had been elected to the council and moved up its ranks to a prominent position, such as the president. Now, the politician's plan was the, to evacuate the government from Paris and bring them to a remote place, the Chateau de saint Cloud. Meanwhile, Napoleon and his military allies would execute the next move. The army would encircle Paris and place it into a quiet martial law while events at the chateau continued in order to stop an insurrection or rising of saint culottes similar to that of the storming of Tuileries. The next move would be directly under Napoleon's command. He would command the 17th Division, who would maintain, in quote, order and protect the councils at St. Cloud. Napoleon had also met with the new Minister of Police, another man instrumental in the fall of Robespierre, Joseph Fouché. Fouché had been a violent member of the Jacobins during the Reign of Terror, where he was responsible for the massacre of Lyon. However, he had a falling out with Robespierre following this massacre, which pushed him and Paul Barras to become allies and help coordinate the fall of the Jacobins. But now the conspirators had total control of the situation. The army would be stationed around Paris, Fouché and the police would be prepared to enforce martial law if necessary, and at St. Cloud, Napoleon sat with a division of troops to again, quote, protect the councils. On November 9th, 1799, or better known as the 18th of Brumaire, year 8, Saez and another director, Roger Ducos, resigned as directors. Next, Talleyrand convinced Paul Barras, the father of the directory, to resign. Under immense pressure and seeing the writing on the wall, Barras resigned. This now made the directory of five only have two members, which made them unable to hold a quorum. The other two men protested, but there was nothing they could do to stop the wheel now that it was in motion. And the two men would be arrested the next day by General Moreau, a Bonapartist general. Now, the pretense for bringing the councils out of Paris was there was an attempted Jacobin plot. But by the second day on the 19th of Brumaire, the two assemblies realized there was no coup in Paris, only at St. Cloud. The realization reached Lucien, who had told his brother and conspirators, who moved troops more onto the grounds of the chateau in order to intimidate the deputies. Saez, Ducos, and Talleyrand tried to treat with the impatient general, informing him to let the conspirators in both houses do their jobs, but Bonaparte had had enough. With a platoon of French grenadiers, he marched into the Council of Ancients, trying to reason with the deputies of the upper house, he was heckled and accosted. A man screamed, what of the Constitution? Napoleon quickly yelled back, the Constitution? You yourselves have destroyed it. You violated it on the 18th of Fréquillador. You violated it on the 22nd of Floril. You violated it on the 30th of Praliel. It no longer has the respect of anyone. He then marched into the Council of 500, where his brother was shocked by the sight of his brother storming into the chamber like it was a battlefield. Unlike the upper house, the lower house had no pleasantries. They swore and even ha laid hands on Napoleon, hitting him, and even one tale said that one deputy pulled a dagger in an attempt to kill the would-be Caesar. But a grenadier stopped the blow before it could take place. The soldiers pulled Napoleon out, where the encamped vision, the encamped soldiers now saw their commanding general distraught and wounded. Napoleon was bleeding from his head, but it may have been a self-inflicted wound due to a nervous tick he had. Lucien joined the conspirators as they attempted to figure out the next steps. He had for informed the conspirators that the council had declared his brother an outlaw and seeked his arrest. Saez and Ducos wished to flee. But Napoleon and Lucien saw an advantage in his condition. The two ran out to the gardens where the soldiers were. 
Lucien jumped on a box and began to speak about violence and how men in the council had attempted to murder their commander. And now they were attempting to outlaw him, saying that he was attempting a coup d'etat of the government. Dramatically, he drew a sword, putting it to Napoleon's chest, declaring, had he thought his brother was attempting to stage a coup and trample on civil liberties, he would drive the sword into his brother's chest himself. The soldiers cheered and Lucien directed them to clear out the Council of 500. Now more grenadiers, commanded by the flamboyant Joachim Murat, entered the halls. The deputies were horrified as more soldiers than hussars entered the chambers and dissolved the Council of 500. At the sight of the assault on the Council of 500, the Council of Ancients quickly declared a provisional government, naming General Napoleon Bonaparte as First Consul of the Republic, with Saez and Ducos as Second and Third Consuls. The Directory was dead, and Saez's coup had worked. But something that Saez and Ducos did not take account for happened. Now, it wasn't by accident that Napoleon was named First Consul. Originally, the position was to hold a tenure of ten years, something Saez himself conceived in order to limit the power of Napoleon. But with the confirmation of the new government in the constitution of year eight, Napoleon had last minute rewritten and placed first consul as a life term. The new constitution was given to the people with three million votes approving the constitution. Napoleon then took up residence in the Tuileries Palace, which was protested by his wife Josephine. But it was clear Napoleon was no longer a Republican figure. He was giving off the facade of a republic, but in the reality was even with the two other consuls and the legislator. Napoleon had enough power to veto and had almost complete loyalty of the army and police force under Fouché. France was no longer the republic, but a pseudo-kingdom led by Napoleon. The constitution of year eight would directly lead to the abolishment of the French Republic and the creation of the first French empire. The 18th of Brumaire is often forgotten by history, especially in the history of Napoleon Bonaparte. The consulate would only last five years. It would see the, for such famous events as the Battle of Marengo, where this famous portrait was based on. It also brought the end of the War of the Second Coalition and would be the government in effect at the beginning of the actual Napoleonic Wars. All right, and that there we have it. So the 18th of Brumaire was extremely important. The coup d'etat between Saez, Drucos, Talleyrand, Fouché, and Napoleon, all these men come together with Lucien at the head of the uh, Council of 100, 500, apologies. There would be no Napoleonic era. Without the creation of the consulate, there would not be no route to an empire at that time. Maybe a monarchy, but no route to an empire. Because without the constitution of year eight, Napoleon would have never been able to take power. So thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. It's, a, it's, a, it's something people are a little familiar with, but I don't think a lot of people realize how he went from general to emperor. And this was the first in a few steps to that path. So thank you so much again for joining. Again, we're so close to that 500. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe. I have new content up every week. I try to get at least two videos up a week, whether it's an original content, a reaction, or a review. I try to make sure I get it up, or even a tier maker. I do like doing tier makers sometimes. Uh, thank you so much again. If you're returning, please like, share, and comment. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you didn't like. Tell me what you want me to see, see me do a little more of. And again, thanks so much for viewing. I hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one.